Hey, I'm Chrissy Fox, co-writer and star of Buried the Bride, and you're listening to movies that don't suck and some that do. Hey, this is Spider One, a director and co-writer of Bury the Bride, and you are listening to movies that don't suck and some that do. All right, let's do this. Yeah. All, right. All right, Chris, you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's another episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. And today we got a special one for you guys. It's part of the Panic Film Festival uh, series that we're going to be doing for the next uh, two weeks. Uh, We are going to be covering some of the best horror movies coming through the Kansas City area, northern Kansas City, at the Screenland Armored Theater. If you have never been there, definitely go there. One of my favorite theaters of all time. With us today, we have the writers and and one of the stars of the new movie, (laughs) Bury the Bride. Uh, which is featuring the one and only Chrissy Fox and Spider One. Yeah. Hey, Hi. <laughs> Just so, so what, how did how did you find the uh, was that the Ukrainian Blink One Eighty Two to film do your theme song? <laughs> Ar- Argentinian. We went on a website called okay. Fiverr, and I hired a guy. This is like five years ago. I hired a guy to, to um record a theme song and get the lyrics, and he sent it over. It's it's weird. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I was when he showed it to me the first time. I was half lit, and I was just like, "Yeah, dude, that's awesome! (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty awesome." (laughs) Thanks. Um, So, really quick, I want to say it's a thrill to have you guys on. We're really stoked that you guys uh, agreed to come on the podcast. It's it's a big deal for us, honestly. Oh well, thanks. Thanks. We're excited. Never been a big deal before. I know. (laughs) Exciting for us. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, Spider. I've literally seen you like over 40 times in concerts. Me and my oh, wife wow. are huge fans of you. We, oh, thanks. We've seen you everywhere. In, uh, we've seen you in Chicago. We've seen you in Kansas City. Uh, we've seen you in Dallas. Like, So we followed you guys around for a while back uh, when we first got together. It was the one band that literally like, we were like, yeah, Power Man oh, 5000. <laughs> so I, That's it's awesome. very, yeah. very appreciated that you got here. No, I appreciate um, that, bro. Getting into the uh, the movie about uh, Barry the Bride. Now, um, one, this is coming from your guys' production company, the One Fox Production Company. Now, now, uh, tell people how this came about, uh, our listeners. I, I've heard the story, but how did this uh, production company come about? Um, sure. Well, we uh, when we got together, we started uh, – doing music videos so we we were both in bands and we knew other bands so we're like you know it was kind of more of a fun thing and we would direct our own videos make our own videos but then when the pandemic was about to start and it was kind of like this really weird question of what was going to happen and you know how long this lockdown was going to be we're like you know let's let's uh let's make a couple short films let's go into the narrative space and we loved it and um and then we're like okay let's take it a step further let's let's see if we can get through an entire film and this was like right when it was like hardcore lockdown crazy covid no one was doing anything so we had all these great actors sitting at home doing nothing all these great you know our cinematographer everyone was just available so we're like let's see how this goes and then it worked and then so we just kept going you know and the momentum continued and um yeah and now we're we're in pre-production on our fifth feature Ooh. in like three years which is crazy <laughs> as it goes when you're doing stuff like that it's like one day you're like man i just started working in this kind of industry <laughs> and the next day you're like oh it's 20 years what? <laughs> yeah <laughs> seriously I mean, yeah i mean i think one other thing that was a big part of us starting this on our own was the realization frustration of trying like in anything in life trying to get other people in, involved mm-hmm. you know we first wanted to start making movies like a lot of people we thought like oh well we you can't do that yourself you need help with other, from other people and so we would we would have meetings with other producers you know and they would promise you the world they have all this funding and we'll be shooting by next month and don't worry and blah 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 and we found that nothing ever happened Right. We'd be, we'd, we'd be on the hook for six months waiting for some meeting to happen or this to happen or that to happen. 
until we finally just got to the point where like we could just do this ourselves. You know, we could just right. scrape together, you know, enough money and we had enough friends and contacts. I'm like, but you know, it's, it's like anything in life. It's just convincing yourself first that you can do whatever you want right. as long as you're willing to put in the work and, and a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so we decided that, you know, like we didn't need anybody at, to, to at least begin. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the greatest decision that we ever made. We were just like, let's just fucking do it. Let's just start working. And we started, you know, making our own stuff. Yeah, it was really cool because we realized um, we had these skills that, you know, like I do all the posts on the films. I right. edit and I do all the sound. And we do them. And obviously we both can do music. And so we're like, hey, wait, like maybe, you know, a lot, a lot of filmmakers, they have to, you know, okay, well, we're going to shoot this, but then I need someone else to edit it. And then I need someone else to do the sound design. Then I need someone else. to. And we're like, oh, well, we can do everything here. And we have an <laughs> office in our house. And, and then, yeah, it, it started to work. And then all of a sudden we started having other people reaching out being like, hey, I want to get involved somehow in the next film. And so, yeah, with Barry the Bride, we had a couple um, outside <laughs> producers with, you know, financing and stuff like that it was the first time we did that. And it was really successful. Um so yeah, it's just been kind of growing and snowballing, and that's exciting. Yeah, one thing I did, I did just hear you say, you said uh, you also you worked on the music, and I noticed you put some knee high fox song, uh, Jawbreaker, I believe was on. <laughs> yeah, that one Power Man song couldn't throw in there. I see how that. Is. <laughs> that was his decision. I was like, I'm always down to put it. He's like, no, I want to, I want to license out. You know, we really did want to use some outside music. Sure. Um, well, like you know, we went to. Yeah, like that band Nightclub has oh, a song. Oh, that yeah. is okay. that was fantastic scene. Probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie. It, it really bounced out the the dread you were feeling in the whole movie, and it sort yeah. of it sort of eased it back until oh fuck, what just happened after that? So that was that was a great <laughs> scene in that movie. Let's really, yeah, let's get into Barry the Bride because uh, again, we we watched uh, uh, Allegory from last year. Love that. Yeah. This is a completely different uh, train. In fact. Um, where did the idea for Bury the Bride come from? Like, where's the concept? Did you, like, just go to a bar one night and see, like, an annoying group of, of <laughs> like, you know, bridesmaids and, like, oh, they need to die somehow? Well, I think that if you can I mean, like, all good ideas, they evolve. But I think the original, well, I don't, it's, a lot of it is, it's honestly, like, personal family stuff like like yeah. people <laughs> that we know or family members we know. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Canada, and so a lot of the elements of this, these guys, I'm like, Oh wow. That's like my brother and his friends, like, you know, not (laughs) not to the dangerous part, but when they all drink and stuff and you're like, okay. And then, um, yeah, in, in a nice way, obviously they're not murderers or horrible people, but um, as we know, as far as we know. Yeah. Um, but no, I think initially it was like, we had a couple of the projects ahead of Barry the Bride and I was like, Hey, I had this weird thought in the shower. There was like a really small idea around it that spider and I grew. And I was like, Hey, what if we did something like, this seems like it'd be really easy and quick to shoot. We could do in between these other <laughs> things we're doing. It was not easy. And quick, just, <laughs> just so you know, but it grew into Barry the Bride. So I'm glad, I'm glad that happened. And yeah, it, it really evolved from just pulling from people we know. And yeah. I mean, I think the heart and... of the story really is the sisters and you, right. uh, Chrissy has two sisters. So mm-hmm. I think the relationship between her and Scout in the movie is based on a lot of the real yeah. life sort of right. sisterly tension and love, you know, it's like you love them and you hate them and you think they're <laughs> stupid and you, you know, you want to help them and, so I think that the heart of the movie is really that beyond the horror stuff. But um, so I, if I remember correctly with that, that kind of relationship that sort of started the idea. Yeah. And think, oh, we can get one location and a bachelorette party and that will just create all this conflict <laughs> and, you know, craziness. So there, there's one uh, one shot that's definitely, I think, uh, a main added to a character that I think that adds to the movie. And that is the creepy little house that you guys oh, yeah. found. Like, they, were you guys, like, just driving down a road? And it's like, that creepy house right there. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, it, it wasn't that simple, but, you know, that is, it's funny you say that, because on tour, you see a lot of those kind of places. You know, you're driving in, in the middle of nowhere, four hours of nothing, and all of a sudden off the side of the road, you see that kind of place. Yeah. And it's always been a source of, you know, on, when, when you're out on the road and you see places like that, you, it's, a, it's like a Texas Chainsaw kind of vibe where you're just yeah. like, what the fuck goes on there? Like, what? <laughs> Who lives in that house, you know? 
So that was sort of the I idea. I think that was the first thing we asked the people when we went and looked at their property. We're like, do you guys live here? And they're like, oh, no. I'm like, oh, thank you. It was so like... But, you know, it was uh, somebody at one point, somebody's real house, yeah. Yeah. as was the other, the secondary house that um, was really dilapidated. Apparently that had been in a flood oh, and right. whatever was left of it was just standing. So all those in that and the, the trailer and all that was on one property. Oh, wow. Um, in Lancaster, California, in the middle of the desert. And uh, it was it was an amazing location to shoot on. Uh, but it I was not. I take you guys to shoot out there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's like I hesitate. It's weird. I hesitate to, to tell people the, the kind of shooting schedule we do because it's <laughs> On one hand, it makes people go like, wow, that's how is that even possible? You know, and then the other hand, people are impressed that we were able to shoot. But I will say I will. I will tell you that we we shot the entire movie in seven days. Oh, shit. Oh, no, no way. Yeah. No way. And that's all crazy. night shoots, I have to add, which is makes it extremely more difficult. It was crazy. Yeah, I've said yeah, this in other, other interviews where, you know, like this movie could, you know, they are, you know, it's, it's one of those movies where you hear stories about, you know, the madness of shooting Apocalypse Now or oh, Jaws, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and this is one of those things that feels like that. It was, it was insane. Like, by the <laughs> end of it, we were, I think we were all, we had all gone mad. We had we <laughs> yeah. tackled so much material, it's, you know, and the, and the environment was so, you know, what you're seeing on screen is exactly what that place was. The weather was awful. You know, we were freezing at night. There were hurricane force winds. There were sand tornadoes. There were rattlesnakes. There. Oh my yeah. god! It was it was nuts. Did uh, you feel this like down that block from my house? Because I live in Oklahoma next to Texas. And like, yeah, know. it's a similar you vibe. Know? I think <laughs> Oklahoma is much more civilized than where we were. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. Like we would drive home at night after we were shooting, and it was still dark, and there'd be like a guy in the middle of a desert on the on a bike. But we're like. T- minimum 20 miles from any kind of civilization just like riding and you're like where is he going like this is so scary <laughs> I, I was i was driving to set one day and there was a car pulled over on the side of the road and it had like no hood on the car it looked like it was an abandoned but apparently and there was a woman standing by the car and a guy on the other side of the car and i could see him with a giant metal pipe just like smashing something on the ground on the other side of the car when I couldn't see what it was. <laughs> yeah, so. Speed up, yeah. Yeah. Oh okay. man, I think you just found where they buried Jimmy Hoffa. So, uh, so, we, cast, so we, cast, we cast him in the movie. He yeah. Was, no, no, that's the main character of the film. Yeah. So I'm not going to give away the ending or anything, but to me, Barry the Fried has the perfect ending to me. Like oh, the thank perfect you. ending. So was this idea fully formed when you started filming or did the vision change as you were on set? Uh, we were pretty locked in once the script was done, right? Because uh, we didn't have time to <laughs> do much improvising yeah. or changing. I mean, we did have to improvise a lot on on details of mm-hmm. um, like like we thought we were going to shoot this here, but it was too windy, so we had to move it over here, stuff like that. But the story itself was flushed out. I mean, we had a pretty pretty solid, no, very solid script. Um, so all yeah, all the beats of the film were there. Um, as far as I remember, we didn't really change anything. Well, yeah, we the the big thing, and people are like, you know, how is it possible to shoot that quickly? And mm-hmm. and the reason is, is we do a lot of pre-production, so oh, we sure. do a lot of table reads, a lot of rehearsals with the cast ahead. So like everybody really knows exactly what they're doing, and so we don't have to do a ton of takes. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so yeah, the the script is really fleshed out. And um, the only thing that really changed from the original script is it was going to be in a, a cabin in the woods, and it ended up being a cabin in the desert. So we had to alter the script around that, but it didn't really change the story right. that much. Yeah, that's yeah. right, because it's very hard to find a cabin in the woods in Los Angeles. It is very hard. <laughs> I like the cabin in the desert. <laughs> Me too. I think yeah. it's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think the cabin in the desert actually gives it more of a more of a mystique. The, the dels- desolate, the like, yeah, desolate location. I agree. I think it it was one of those things that you know, which happens sometimes when you're making, you know, indie films that you have to you have to be flexible and things get thrown at you, change, and more than not, the changes end up being for the better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's an indication. That's a you know an example of uh, yeah the the fact that we couldn't do it in the woods. I think ended up being a better choice. So we, uh, we had a we had we actually had a conversation last year with a um, about a movie called uh, When the Screaming Starts, which is kind of like a mockumentary, uh, like uh, what we do in Shadows. 
okay. but, except for about serial killers. And they said the whole reason they had to take it to a DACA series was because the way they're filming it didn't look right. So they had to make it look like a documentary to make it. Right. <laughs> sure. And it's a really good movie. Uh, definitely check it out if you can. Yeah, um, for sure. If now it seems like the both of you are now doing a lot more hands on, doing a lot more, you know, uh, stuff. Like, what parts of the filmmaking process are you guys enjoying more than the others? Right. Oh, um, well, I know the stuff we hate is the <laughs> <laughs> is anything non creative, like sure. any kind of like logistical <laughs> producer stuff that isn't like you know. Yeah. Fun, creative stuff. Um, I really love doing, you know, basically like production design, you know, mm -hmm. like, I love, and I love uh, wardrobe and all that stuff. I love, you know, just, just, just setting the aesthetic and the look of a film, uh, working on problem solving of how to make something look, you know, distressed or burnt out or old or, you know, whatever it is that you do. I love that. Because, you know, I mean, it started out in art school. So, you know, it's like kind of my, in my wheelhouse to, to think that way. So all that stuff, but yeah, anything that has to do, with, yeah. well, anything has to do with spending money or. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. I mean, we love, we both love, um, we're really passionate about practical effects. Right. So we really love yeah. working with the makeup artists and we do a lot of pre and set up, you know, we're doing a new movie that there's going to be a lot of that, but bury the bride. We had to do, you know, we had heads and we had a lot of blood and so yeah. we, we love doing that stuff and i mean i love the Which acting is side really of it really funny so when we do makeup tests <clears throat> at home and our, i don't i don't think our neighbors know like yeah. like she'll walk out Side to get something out of her car covered in blood. <laughs> I scared the little the, the we have an old couple next door and like their granddaughter is ruined. She she was like six. And oh. I was like, oh, no. No. she was I, running down the street. <laughs> my my wife uh, back when we lived in Kansas City, my wife actually went out for her bridesmaids night. You know her uh, her bridal shower, and she was covered in a blood covered dress. <laughs> <laughs> And like, and like the neighbors are awesome. like, no, don't worry. We're not, we're not, I, I, I swear. Um, so, um, the, you guys mentioned this several times. So you guys both wrote the script for this movie here. And I know, um, both of you individually have written really good music, even on your side with, uh, Neil Hype. Like I literally have listened to you guys in the past before, uh, Power Man uh, 5000 and stuff. But, um, now, lyrically, do you guys like writing like a song because it's like a simpler four minute, five minute atmosphere or doing a script you like? Is there like a music to it trying to write exactly how the dialogue goes back and forth? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's definitely a challenge because it's the first thing we really wrote together. Oh, wow. Because some, you know. It, well, that we made. We made. We wrote one other thing, but we didn't make it. This is the first thing we really like. Right. So it, into. It, it, yeah. it can be. It's like it's it, it's helpful and it's and it's a challenge. Like it's help, it's good to have somebody else there to, like Chrissy tends to be the like, sit down and write like ten pages in one sitting, and I'm like, hmm. Like, <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> so it got it the it made the the completion of the script probably really faster than it would have been had I just done it myself. And um, and then you know you get into moments when you you are arguing over. I really want this. And, you know, I hate that line. I love that line. And you have to kind of yeah. find ways to compromise. And it's, it's interesting. Cause I know that I'm sure that question will come up a lot about co-writing and, and I was trying to like, look at it and see, you know, and I think it's weird at the end of the day, I almost feel like even, you know, we contributed, we, we, we contributed equally to the whole thing, but I almost feel like as a con concept, it's like you almost embody the female characters and I embody the male characters. <laughs> like it's sort of, like I can I, see that. I feel like those are the ones I contributed to the most, whereas a lot of the female character dialogue, I didn't really touch because I was like, oh, that's your voice and you, you know what I mean? So, which I think ultimately made the script really strong because you did get this cultural clash between these characters, you know, this like societal, like, you know, men and women. And you see that, like, yeah. we didn't set out to like make a statement about that, but when sure. I look at some of the dynamics between the, like, especially when they're all together in one scene, you can really feel that 
when they start arguing about, you know, killing animals or whatever. And it's like, it's a, it really like is a good. I've literally had those arguments. There is a couple lines though. I did uh, for the guys that I definitely give that my uncle would say, like, I'm like, I have to say this cause it's the weirdest thing. Who says that? But my <laughs> uncle says it. So it's so like, I'm like, <laughs> my actual next question was what characters are most fun to write? Yeah, I mean, Carmen was really fun. Yeah. yeah, she's always she's always fun to work with. Lindsay, she's um she, her background is comedy, so yeah. we knew when we were writing it that she was gonna play Carmen, and 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 we we really trust her with the comedy aspect. So she's really fun. David was really yeah, fun. I really like enjoyed the David character and sure. giving those like this weird pseudo religious <laughs> poetic ramblings. Like that to me is like my only. That's like. You know, you say like Allegoria is a very different movie than this, and it mm-hmm. is because this is a much more like Allegoria was all, the characters were like all in their heads and like little self inflated right. versions of themselves and trying to, you know, pontificate, <laughs> you know, the, all these deep thoughts. And like, so I was like, oh, this is my one chance to kind of like put a little of that in this movie by having him just having this, you know, like I said, you know, this almost like religious. Uh, uh, bit to me, he's almost like a preacher, you know. Oh, yeah. but he's, like, but he's kind of Koreshian, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, or for sure. A redneck pre- preacher uh, from the trailer court. Uh, I, I know plenty of those. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's cool. That one, I mean, I, I actually really liked um, developing the Sadie character too because mm-hmm. we really intentionally made her be like, you know, she really probably should have been the one who dies first, you know, and that was kind of the fun part about it, you know, and just to see this. The way she evolves without giving too much away, her character really changes and progresses through the movie. And I thought that was a really fun. We didn't know for sure right away which character I was going to play. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was really happy I ended up with Sadie. I thought that was. Oh, you know, the best character I was Puppy because he doesn't speak. Oh, true. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love Puppy. Yeah, Chaz Bono. What a great performance. <laughs> yeah, he was I mean, great. Puppy. He was amazing <laughs> in that role. I just like. <laughs> Is he ever gonna talk? He's like you know, he's like he's like the baby the, the baby in the Simpsons, right? Like she finally yeah, talks after twenty seasons of television. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and Puppy totally has that coming out like speech or you know, of like, you know, everything that, you know, I don't wanna ruin yeah, don't give it. you away. Don't give it away, but great speech by Puppy. Great <laughs> speech by puppy. <laughs> now um you said you guys uh, worked on a lot of the special effects. Did you have like an actual team with you doing all the special effects? Because there's everything from you know the axe cutting, the chest ripping open. The uh, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There was one part I laughed so hard at, and it was the inside the car when the blood just splashed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, just so you guys know, Neil laughs at the most horrifying shit. So um... yeah, I do. <laughs> Like ever since I was in like sixth grade, I got kicked out for Front Nightmare on Elm Street Part Three. I was laughing so hard. Oh. When part of like they're like, dude, you're like eight. You should not be laughing. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, we do. We work with. We have this. We had a great team. Um, we had some people that worked on the pre stuff, which they weren't necessarily on set. Like the head, not to give too much away, but um, his name is Ken, and he Kenneth Calhoun, and he he did an incredible job on that and um and then we had uh Brittany and Ashley yep. and Bobby all were on set um different times Ashley did the reshoots and then uh we had a couple little things and then yeah so it was uh it was great you know we just we spent a lot of time doing the pre-work so we kind of knew exactly what was going to happen and it was really just trying to figure out okay well we have to make sure blood doesn't get all over this wall in this really disgusting <laughs> cabin. You know, it's pretty much was a lot of the challenge are just not destroying the truck, you know, things like that. Yeah. But we, yeah, we don't, I mean, I'm, at some point we'll probably learn how to do it ourselves, but that's one thing that we, you know, we, we obviously in scripting and design wise, if we're designing a monster or something, we do all that. And then we, yeah, we bring on talented people to help us make it a reality. Yeah. All right. So, Chris's question he always likes to ask people when we get a good interview going yeah. is what is and I I hate this question. Yeah, it's a, it's the worst question to ask. I'll do it, dude. So what's your favorite movie of all time? Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite movie? Favorite horror movie of all time. What what do you guys? Oh, think? favorite horror movie. Of all time. I hate yeah, choosing one think? thing. I'm yeah. not a one thing guy. I'm, I'm not I'm either. Like, it's, yeah, uh, it's hard because because there are different yeah. ones. It's it's like saying what's your, who's your favorite band? You know, it's like yeah, it's hard <laughs> to pick down. But but you can pick. You can like. 
I mean, for me, I mean, I'd say number one, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, sure. of course. Um, nice. But That's the remake. Are you sure? <laughs> no. Yeah, no. <laughs> the, the OG, I, I felt a lot like this movie felt like that because it was so hard mm -hmm. and so crazy. Um, but then I have like two runners up, which is just is totally my age. And when I was I was really young, sure. it was the craft and, <laughs> um, and scream. You are the weirdos. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, is the craft a horror movie though? I think it. Is, I don't know. But I, mean, it, it, I guess it's debate. I mean, yeah. I mean, what I is it? Like it's spooky romance. for sure, though. It is but, spooky you know, for sure. I, yeah, I dated a lot of Wiccans when I was in the teen. <laughs> Oklahoma witches. Yeah, I, don't, I guess for me, I guess. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I love Texas Chainsaw, and I love the first Halloween, and I. But I think for me, like The Shining is yeah. probably the greatest horror movie ever made. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say Jaws. Well, Jaws would be, yeah, and that's another one, like, people will debate whether Jaws is a horror movie. I mean, if Jaws is a horror movie, then, but The Shining is a... <laughs> yeah. The Shining is beautiful. That's it's beautiful. Just, yeah. Beautiful movies, even though it's a horror movie. Like, it's still one of the ones I go to bed to at night. Like, I throw that <laughs> on and go to sleep. Yeah, we, do, we did that for, we watched it so many, we'd fall asleep to it all the, I don't know how. We would, like, wake up with Shelly Duvall screaming. Every single night. Yeah, it was, like, the beginning of us dating. I think it was seriously for, like, two months. But, it, <laughs> it but it's just such a, you know, I mean, it, you know, sometimes with genre stuff, you, you, you always, like, uh, there's an asterisk next to stuff like my favorite horror movie, but my favorite movie, you know, as if it's a <laughs> yeah. different. Yeah. But The Shining is one of those movies yeah. that there's no apologies, you know, for it being a horror movie. Sure. It is just one of the greatest movies ever made. So, yeah, yeah I just love everything about it because, you know, it, it's, I mean, I'm a big Kubrick fan anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love the fact that it, it has all the elements, you know, it's scary. It has gore. It has, you know, but it also has this, you know, uh, just this this otherworldly vibe about it. It's almost like watching a dream, you know. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I got to so. go over up to Overlook one time because I was actually a wedding DJ and stuff, and I had to go up there looking for some stuff. And literally, the the aura that building gives you just walking up to it <laughs> is just. Yeah, it's bet. unreal. It's unreal. You just don't ever get a different. You don't get. There's only several buildings I've walked to, like the Winchester mm -hmm. Mansion or the the Sally House in Kansas, which is the most haunted house of all time, or whatever. But the, they just give you an aura that is just like, oh, oh. Well, now you can add the bury the bride cabin to that. Yes. <laughs> I don't even think there's an address for it, but yeah. <laughs> now, um, just before we go, now, do you guys have any advice for aspiring filmmakers who are just starting out, who's trying to go out there and do it? Because we get a lot of we get a lot of independent filmmakers yep. that listen to our show. Yeah. What what advice can you give them? Wow, there's I mean, so many yeah. things you could say. I mean, we kind of touched on it earlier in this conversation about, you know, a big part of doing something is just doing something, mm -hmm. um, you know, and convincing yourself that, you know, I think the mistake a lot of people need is they think they need all these things in a row before they can begin something or accomplish something. And the reality is you don't, you know. I mean, the beauty about making movies is you can you can make a movie. If you can film it on your iPhone, you can film, you know, whatever. You can make a movie for zero dollars, you know, with your friends. It doesn't mean it's going to be good or a success or make you any money, but it is an accomplishment that you can achieve. Um, so just sort of realizing that, that it, that it is incredibly hard work and more work than you probably imagine. But it's not it's not a magic trick. I mean, it is just hard work. So it, it is possible if you're willing to put in the time. And then... Um, other than that, it's just, uh, you know, don't, if you're writing a script, write a script that's achievable. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I would say, don't write Star Wars if you have $1,500 <laughs> to make yeah. a movie. You know what I mean? It's like, write a story about two people at dinner, at, you know, and something crazy happens. I mean, you can just be strategic about what you're doing, you mm -hmm. know, and it, that will help you achieve your goals. Yeah, I think, too, sometimes finding, which we were lucky to, besides each other, just finding, like, you don't need a lot of people, but a small team that you love to work with that everybody has some different talents, you know, right. like our cinematographer, we use him on everything, and, you know, our sound people are our effects people, and so I think if you find, like, that small core group, this the family, and, you know, you can do something with five people that looks much more expensive, you right. know, if everybody's right. good at what they do, so... 
yeah, I would, yeah, just people get in their own way and they overthink things and yeah, that's the best thing you could do. All right. Awesome. Well, well um, it's been a pleasure having both you guys on, on the show. Uh, I just want everybody to know, Barry the Bride hits to be April 22nd on the free app to download. The film is set to have its world premiere at Panic Fest in right. Kansas City on April 15th. And then it will be screening at the Salem Horror Film Festival on April 22nd, the same day as a release. Yeah, we're trying to get this out before Panic Fest, so anyone who hasn't bought a ticket yet can get a ticket. Um, I'll be there, yeah. so I'll, I'll be at the screen too. So I'm super oh, excited. Great. Oh, we're excited! Yeah, to meet Panic you. Fest is so much fun. We were there last year for Allegoria, oh, yeah, and yeah. it was just like such a such a great festival. And the people who run it are are the are, they've become friends now, and um, we're excited to go back. So we're gonna fly to Panic Fest, and then fly straight to Salem, <laughs> yeah, and wow. then fly home, and then yeah, yeah it's, it's gonna Fest, be really fun. Everyone tell I tell Panic Fest is my favorite time of year. So it, yeah. it's crazy there. They know how to treat their filmmakers and oh, they yeah. really love passionately love film and independent films. So that's just a really special thing. We're so lucky to be a part oh, of I'm it. I'm excited to see you guys there. So I think that's we it. met, I think we met at panic fest last year. We, we, we did, we did take a picture. <laughs> I know it's going to be, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I recognize your awesome. face. <laughs> uh, we took that. Remember we took that photo and then I had security quickly usher you. That's out. exactly <laughs> what happened. Yeah. yeah. I have some exactly. bruises. Have it somewhere, but, um, <laughs> but I'll come on and say hi at the at the festival. That's okay. Yes, yes please. please do. Okay. Um, yes. uh, real quick, uh, what I have uh, I guess do every every episode is if you could say your name and then say, for example, I'm sorry, everyone, you're listening to movies that don't suck and some they do. Would you guys say mm-hmm. that for me? <clears throat> I will. Uh, movies that don't suck and some that do, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, this is Spider One, a director and co-writer of Barry the Bride, and you are listening to movies that. Don't suck in some that do. Perfect. And Chrissy, which one? I want to know which ones that do suck. <laughs> okay, so uh, we, got, we, we got a whole list every year. <laughs> yep. Barry is definitely in the don't suck category. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, think I was like, oh, maybe we're yeah, in the I, suck I, category. Uh, your uh, movie last year was actually in our honorable mentions. Yeah, we get five oh. honorable mentions every year. Honorable mentions that suck or that don't suck. Don't suck. No, that was good. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that uh, Chrissy, can you do the same thing for me? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm Chrissy Fox, co-writer and star of Barry the Bride, and you're listening to movies that don't suck and some that do. Oh, perfect. I Thank, thank you guys so much for being on the show. <laughs> thank yeah, you for having appreciate. us. This is so thank fun. You guys very much. Um, you guys enjoy the whole festival season. I know you guys are going to be out a lot of places and stuff like that. We really appreciate you guys coming by today. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We'll see you guys in uh, in uh, Kansas City. I'll see you there. One right. of you, right? Yeah, Thanks. <laughs> Bye, guys. All right. Hey guys, Chris here. Thanks for listening to the first of our Panic Fest 2023 uh, special themed episodes. Spider One and Chrissy Foss couldn't even more cool, and we were thrilled to have them on the podcast. Their movie, Bury the Bride, is showing Saturday, April 15th at Screenland. Go to screenland.com or panicfilmfest.com to uh, get tickets for that. I think all the hybrid passes are sold out, but virtual passes for the fest are still available, so jump on that. So uh, thanks for listening. We've got plenty more uh, episodes of Panic Fest. Film Fest 2023 stuff coming out. Uh, if you guys want to get a hold of us, you can find us online at wizzonsub.net. We're on uh, w2mnet.com. Again, w number 2m is a Mary net.com. They got all kinds of podcasts there, like wrestling and games and uh, and uh, movies, uh, again, like us. And then we want you to check that out for sure. Uh, we're on Facebook at facebook.com. So that's news podcast. We're on Twitter and at, at MTS Podcast. We're on Instagram at MTS Podcast. Uh, go to Patreon.com slash Movies Don't Suck. You guys can throw us a few shekels to help the, the, the lots on over here. Also, uh, if you guys want shirts with our shit on it, go to Bonfire.com slash Movies Don't Suck. And something new, you'll find some other stuff. Uh, if you guys want to send us an old-fashioned email, info at MoviesDon'tSuck.net or MoviesDon'tSuck.com. You guys, subscribe on YouTube, or like us on Facebook, and where you find podcasts going Movies that Don't Suck and something new. Uh, we uh, will have more episodes for this coming up, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll see you guys later.